Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, some of you are working. Uh, some, uh, some others are um, creating. It's a very interesting thing to be here this, uh, uh, this year. I've been at the Blender Conference last year, and um, it's so great to see how many different uh, backgrounds and people from other countries all come here with, the, uh, with Blender in common. And each one of them, each one of you creates something different. And it's so exciting uh, for somebody like me who created a company all around Blender. Um, it started everything in 2015 when uh, I was a music composer and I was working for um, a global advertising agency in Singapore. And I was sitting beside a 3D guy who was uh, creating things, uh, I think with Maya, I guess. So I was very curious about what he was creating just with a computer and basically a keyboard and a mouse. And you know, this cube that was becoming something uh, completely different, completely great, and uh, I got very curious, and I started studying, and I started with SketchUp, um, and then I found some limits, and I moved to Blender because I didn't really want to um, spend money for a hobby that I just started, and I started getting things, you know, some cool design, and then I found that there was the rendering time that was a huge obstacle, and at that point, I didn't really want to solve a problem. I just met somebody who had some data centers in the United States based on GPUs, and I suggested to do something for rendering. And he asked me to, to run this thing, and we uh, ended up with um, the largest cloud render platform ever built without even uh, knowing. And uh, so CoreWeave is a cloud render platform today and is totally, purely based on Blender. It supports Blender in every shape and form. Um, let me just go ahead for a second and um, um, understand what really we make different compared to any other render farm. Uh, if I want to put it just in one simple word, we listen to Blender users and we act immediately. We listen and we act re, uh, based on what are the needs of the Blender users. And we came up with two solutions who are currently changing the entire workflow of Blender users for a simple reason. Because we wanted the creators to stay creative without having distraction because of the render time. So what we have done. Um, we created one product called Cubic, um, launched this year in January. And very quickly, Cubic offer zero queue, so you don't have to wait to render your things, one button to start into Blender. And you can have up to 80 GPUs per project, parallel rendering, automatic texture up, texture pack. So this means that you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to wrap your textures. It goes automatically. Uh, it downloads automatically your render files, and it costs 50 cents per hour. I think that a demo playing with Cubic explains much better what this means. So I have Cubic open here, and the moment you, uh, you download it, uh, it automatically installs the add-on for Blender. I also open Blender with a completely empty files, and what you do, you just activate the add-on like any other add-on. These two new buttons in Blender appear right where usually used to be the old uh, image render and animation render. Uh, if, you, if I hit this button, everything that is in my scene, uh, objects, texture, simulation cache, everything that you, linked files, everything gets wrapped in one single file and gets rendered over 80 GPUs. Let me just pick something. Um, I think I have, uh, let's see, monkey test, SQ. Okay, let's do something together. I think it makes, makes, more, makes more sense to create something together.
something really basic. I want to just add some complexity to this. Um, I'm on a Mac Pro, so I'm not going to go in render view. I'm not, um, I'm not sure what's going on in the scene, but I can imagine that it's going to be a blue text with metallic. Um, and then I'm going to put something dark on, on the floor, just really to check together what's going on. And I'm going to see. Then we push the samples a little bit higher. And what is it? One. Let's do 500 just for to go a little bit hard on the GPUs. So imagine that I'm a Blender user, and I'm working on my thing. And I'm ready. I'm ready to, I'm not doing anything unrelated to Blender. I'm just building my thing. And whatever it is on my scene, I click on this button, and something tells me that I'm OK. Tasks for, task for Cubic was generated. And I can continue working on my scene and do my stuff. While Cubic, once activated with this button, starts working. OK, let's, let's think that I'm still working on my scene. The file has already been uploaded. And consider that I'm on the Wi-Fi of this place. Whatever you have at home is for sure better than this. And we are already at 25%. Um, actually, it's done. So, it's a very, very simple basic scene, 500 samples, it's a very simple scene. But it, it, this works for any scene, up to eight gigabytes of uh, memory. So if you have a scene of seven or eight, it's a big scene, you can render with it. For animation, it's the same thing. Instead of hitting, okay, this is the result, I can hit this folder, the file is already on my computer, and that's my output. So if for the animation you hit the different button on Blender is the same process. Instead of hitting this one, you hit this one. And you have the animation. The parallel rendering simply makes it uh, that each frame goes on a single server with eight GPUs, up to 80 GPUs. This means that you have, if you have um, 50 frames, each one of them takes one minute, you're going to have 50 uh, frames rendered in one minute. They all come together. So what happened a couple of, three months ago, I guess, it's not so long ago, somebody came in and called us saying, hey, I'm using Cubic, but I have a 12K scene with leaves and trees and old vegetation things. It's for a big projection, and I have 600 frames to make. And we said, OK, no problem. If Cubic doesn't work because of uh, the size of the scene or the complexity, we can render for you. We can, make, we can get it for you. So send it to us. Uh, we got it rendered over um, 1,200 GPUs. And uh, it was ready in, in two weeks. Instead of the normal render time, that would have taken probably, um, I think, half a year to get it done. Because even on our machine, it was taking 12, 20 hours per frame. So we thought that probably Cubic is a product that is good if you're doing small, medium scenes, but probably you want to go a little bit bigger uh, when it comes to big projects. So we created Concierge. Concierge is for professional artists. Uh, we pushed every, uh, everything we had to the next level, and we continue to improve it. It's something that it's not for, uh, it's not the single button thing that you kind of like in, in, in Blender. Uh, there is a couple of more clicks to get the, your render done. But here, you can have access to all the 45,000 GPUs that we have. And all the technology behind this is based on the fastest internet speed in the United States on the maximum level of security and privacy protection, enterprise level, and um, an interface that is solid as rock because you want to make sure that your work is done without problems. The way Concierge works is as simple as Cubic, but just with one difference, which is related to the way you interact with interface. So first of all, there's nothing to download. It's online. So you log in into this interface with your credentials. And you have a dashboard where you can control um, your work. You have a file manager where you can upload your file and launch the render. And then you have a job manager where you can control the jobs in process. So the first thing that you want to do, you go in file manager and then get uh, the blender, the blend file that, that you want to render. Let me see the one that we just created. It's the beacon. Um, 
Let me see what it is. Beacon 2019 blend. You drop in the concierge, and then it gets uploaded. And then from here, you click on Launch Render. You select the Blender version that you have. The frames that you want to do, let's go crazy and let's do 250 frames. Even though we don't have an animation in them, that's fine. Uh, we can push a little bit the boundaries uh, later and try what happened. So if I hit Render, um, I go on Jobs Manager, and I have my Beacon 2019 rendering. And if I click on View Details, I have the entire situation. So I have rendering here. And I see that the first frame start coming. If I click on that, I have a preview of my file. And I can download the single frame, or I can download the zip file. As you can see, I immediately had just 170, almost 170 frames done. But as I said, it's a very small scene. Let me take you on a, uh, an example or a more complex scene. Uh, and it still keeps going. I think we just hit 250. So I, uh, I think I need to log in with uh, my personal account for a second, so to show you um, other examples of uh, of things that we can do with a scene that is a little bit more complex. So um, just a midway between uh, simple and complicated. I have a scene from the Blender files demo. And it's here. Uh, it's called the Wasp bot from, from Blender. And here in preview, you can see that uh, it takes a little bit of time to open because it's a, a 2,000 by 2,000 image. And it's at 500 samples. And it's a fairly complex thing, but it's, it, it's, not, it's not incredibly high. Um, so we rendered this thing yesterday on the table upstairs, and we watched what's, what was the, uh, the, the result. It was 250 frames rendered in three minutes. 250 of this, of the camera moving around, in three minutes. I think this is something that um, can really change the way uh, you know, artists approach their way of working. You can see the timing here. It started at 14.22. Finish it for 225, 250 frames rendered. And, 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 and that's always, always the same. It depends really on the project that you run. So the reason why this, we believe, is very important is because if you think about it, the render time is something that affects you not at the end of the creative process. It's something that is with you when you start working on something. Even if you don't notice that, you are modeling something, thinking about the render time in the back of your mind, and you don't subdivide too much because of the render time. You don't go for a 6K texture because it will take too much time. Um, you don't push forward uh, probably even the, 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 frame, the frame rate because of the render time. If you consider the render time as not a problem since the beginning, because it's under your skin that the render time is solved. Doesn't matter what render farm or what cloud render service you use. It's just simply you don't render on your computer. Because rendering on your computer is like thinking that you store all your files on your computer. It's, it's going to be the same thing. In the next years, the cloud computing is going to be normal. It's going to be for everyone. It's going to be ac accessed by everyone. And we want to do this for rendering. So imagine that you approach your creative process right off the bat without thinking about the rendering. You can go crazy. You can do whatever thing you want in your render, pro in your creative process. Um, we had another example um, of things, professional, um, professional production done with, uh, done with Core Weave. And I directly go on YouTube to show you uh, what, I, what, what we did recently uh, with, the, with the director that decided to render the entire movie with us. So this is the trailer. Uh, I cannot, the, the movie is not yet out. The audio is from the computer, but I guess it's fine. It's all about images.
So the quality of the images um, that we just saw created in, in Blender with the water simulation, uh, with the resolution of the image, uh, the, 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 um, the fluid simulation cache, everything, ev every complexity that you can imagine was there. Of course, we can go beyond this, and there are many other complexities in any Blender file. But this specific case took us to think of how many assets are in a project like a, a short movie. Yes, the textures, um, the, the, the objects, uh, the cache simulation. So um, what happened is that you try one frame to see how it's coming along. And then you see that that frame is not exactly what you were looking for. So you try it again. And to try again, you have to re-upload it. Doesn't matter what, you have to re-upload everything. So for concierge, we uh, adopted uh, a technique so that you have a folder shared on your computer. And that folder is directly synced with your file manager in concierge. Whatever is in that folder is in your file manager. So that when you open your file manager, which is the easy clean page that I showed you before, it's this one. So these are your files. Whatever is in that folder on your computer is there. If you change something in that folder, in uh, even just a little thing in your Blender project in that folder, and you save it, it's going to be immediately reflected here. So you technically never upload with Concierge. You can upload if you have a Blender file, you drag it inside, but if you have 300 gigs of cache simulation, you want to keep it there, and you want to leave it there forever, and let your computer automatic sync with Concierge. So this is one of the, the things that came out after listening to Blender users who used to say, yes, but yeah, it rendered fast. So I can see immediately what's going on, but I don't want to upload all the texture again, all the things again, all the package again. OK, perfect. So we act, we listen, and then act. And the synchronized folder is something that we are really proud of, because it's really cut a huge piece of um, of the rendering work that it takes uh, to, to get something, something rendered. Uh, talking about um, is that our other application, that is Cubic, um, it used to be a different application just uh, uh, a, few, a, a few months ago uh, where we added, this is our website, and where the application, the 2.4, had uh, the, two main, the two main bars, what is this? where you can we could select the GPU that you wanted to use and the number of GPUs that you want. What number is? That number is the actual number of GPUs that you use even on a single frame. Because we have, and we are the only one to have, the GPU virtualization. So we can combine the power of the GPUs together, even if they are spread across different servers. Combine the power of GPUs means that you can use 22 GPUs of 48 or 150 on a single frame on a single image, not splitting the frames around, just firing all the power on that image. And then using the parallel rendering, using another 140 GPUs to the second frame and to the third and to all of them and deliver all to you 100 frames at a time. We're talking about seconds processing large scenes 100 frames at a time. With Concierge, you can go up to 500 GPUs firing all at the same time and delivering you in seconds even the highest uh, and most complex scene. Um, we decided that this button, this field of selecting the GPUs, sometimes was confusing the users, which don't know exactly if it's better 10, if it's better 5, if it's better 148. You never know. You don't pay more if you, pay, if you get more GPUs. You technically pay the same, but you have the, 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 the product coming together faster. So we said, OK, why don't we take it off? Take off the GPU selection and let the algorithm decide, after looking at the, the project that comes in, decide how many GPUs to use. So we are releasing Cubic 2.5, which is the new version of Cubic, which is going to look like this, like the one that I tested before. And it's just going to have one play button to get started. So you still have the, the model of GPU here 
which is uh, a P104 that's very similar to the, to, the, to the 1080. And you can click this play button, and you are connected. You are not paying when you are connected. You are just paying when you are rendering. And the price is 50 cents per hour per GPU. And to give you just an example, the since basically there are, they are the same price, the the bot that we rendered earlier, the 250 frames, it's going to be something around uh, $8 to get 250 frames altogether. So we think that this these features can really um, help the users to, first of all, to be free from any uh, boundaries created by the render time. Um, the render time can be, as I said before, a limit to the creativity. And probably, um, you know, with the, all the new features coming together with Blender, um, we, we are able to, to keep the pace because Blender is going very fast and we are ha very happy about that. Um, adding every single new feature and add-on in the background. Just to give an example, the denoiser, the, both the denoiser, the node, and the AI one, we need to implement it in the background to make sure that everything works. So that if you use that plugin, we need to have it and it needs to be working. Uh, we have all the fluid simulation and the add-on, the flip fluids. Uh, we have uh, the animation nodes. Every day there is something new and every day we are adding something to our workflow. Um, I would love to have some questions from you. If, if you guys have some technical things that probably, um, yes, absolutely. So if you change something in the scene, I just repeat the question because of the, the camera and the audio. So if you change something while it's rendering, what happened, right? OK, so explaining the way it works, you could probably, uh, I hope I can also answer your question. So the way it works, uh, we get the Blender file from you. Uh, it gets translated into, into data and goes to our facility. Uh, and then basically that Blender file is kind of wrapped. So whatever you do on in your computer, it's basically going to stay on the file in your computer unless you send it again. Oh, with the, oh, with the file manager. OK, Unt unless you save it. So if the moment you, s you render, okay, let me give you an example. You are in your file manager, and this beacon is the one that you have open now. If you launch this render right now, it's going to render that one that you have it there, if you change it on, 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 your, um, on your Blender, it's, it's basically going to be changed in that one, in this file here, unless you click again, Launch Render. So to give you a clear example, the moment you click on Launch Render, this thing is kind of closed and wrapped and sent to the computers. So the moment you click it again, Yes, the ball is going to be blue or red uh, or any other change. Uh, there is one portion of time to allow the system to, to sync. The moment you, s and to, to get it started, you just save it in your, your Blender file or you just technically, um, you know, re-upload it. But the best way to do this, if you have something that you want to change, you save the Blender file, it gets synced and then you relaunch the render from there. It, it's, it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen that you have the first 10 frames red and then the rest blue just because you change it over there. The click on render wraps the file and send it to the machines. Yes, yes, exactly. So for the dependency, yes, let me get the question. Sure, for the dependencies, um, I spoke today um, with uh, a guru of dependencies, a guy that only works uh, with um, with linked files and linked Blender. So um, we are launching this week um, a system that technically accepts any form of uh, compressed file. Um, this is mainly because we wanted to allow anyone with uh, 
something that is not a blend file, to put it in that file, to put it in a folder, wrap it, and send it to us. And then while in File Manager, pointing at what is the, the, the blend file that you want to render, and then automatically clips all the dependencies. So um, it's something that it cannot be done uh, packing. You can also pack the blend file. With, but sometimes you don't want to pack on your desk unless you duplicate it, you pack it, and you send it. But you have, if you have a 200 gigabyte scene, then you are occupying a lot of memory. So we said, OK, let's wrap everything into a zip file and send it over to the farm. Thanks. So the P104 is, uh, if you read the paper, it's four gigabytes, but it's actually eight. So, sorry? Unless you unlock it. <laughs> so if you unlock it, you have eight gigs. And um, so the most important thing when it comes to virtualization, not to parallel rendering, but the virtualization, is to have all the same model of GPUs. Otherwise, they, it doesn't really work. So we have all the same model of GPUs. They are all. Uh, um, 1080, which is the P104, and there is no other model available rather than the new generation that we have, which is the uh, the Titan V. Uh, so we have the P104 and the Titan Vs. We used to have also the, the 1070, the 1060s, but we just picked the most performing one, which is, in our case, um, as you can see, the speed of the rendering, uh, the P104. Um, the size... Uh, in, when it comes to the GPU, matters. So if you have something that is more than 8 gigs, uh, you cannot render with us. Uh, I'm talking about 8 gigs, not the file of the blend file. Uh, I'm talking about when you open the file in Blender, the actual, uh, the actual memory occupation of an Opal blend file. If you, if you have a, a ball, that ball is going to be like probably 4 mega, but if that ball is a million polygons, it's going to be a huge one. So in that case, we set the limit, and we show on the website that the limit is 8 gigs for cubic. For concierge, we can go up to 16 gigs because we have up to 16 gigabytes GPUs. We are acquiring the 32 gigs gigabytes GPU so that we can push forward and get up to 32 gigabytes. It's not a Hollywood standard. Uh, now Hollywood is moving on an average of 200 gigs per scene. Uh, we are not ready for that thing yet, um, but they're also not using Blender yet. So I hope then, we all hope that Hollywood is going to start using Blender for big productions and we're going to be there. Even though we have uh, fan fantastic and amazing things released by, uh, by Blender, if you think about next gen and other beautiful things uh, re um, produ produced by Blender, those kind of scenes are uh, way beyond GPU capabilities. You can mix them together so that the CPU gets the heavy load and the GPU accelerate just, um, the, I think it's called the BVH. So when, when, when there are very complicated angles, shadows, and that's when the GPU comes in, but most of the load is on the CPU. So to, to go straight to the question, the limit is 16 for concierge, the limit is eight for cubic. If a scene is bigger than that, we, we cannot afford, we cannot get it. Um, and, um, and yeah, for the GPUs, we tend to have all the same model, which is originally used for, uh, m for, for mining, uh, but uh, they perform pretty good on, on, on rendering, so we decided to go for it. Oh, sorry, yeah, the price. So the P104 is the only model that we have on both platform instead of the, 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 test, the, the Titan V, and the price is the same. It's 50 cents per hour on both platforms. Concierge used to be 60 cents per hour because there are other processes going on, and together with electricity, 
consumption, you know, but we, we managed to have both flat at 50 cents per hour without changing it. Technical questions, yes. Evaluation of the price? So breaking things is it's very uh, I mean breaking things with like hacking or making something really well that's uh, I mean accessing some somebody else's projects unless you know the password you you cannot do that uh, if you are a very very bad person and try to hack the system. Um, I mean, everybody is subject to that kind of hacking, but we have uh, cybersecurity in place. If something goes wrong, we're insured, insured for that. Uh, we take very seriously the privacy protection and the IP protection because even if it's a freelancer trying to figure something out with Blender with a simple cube, we take care of everything in the same way, take care of everybody in the same with the same uh, attention. And so uh, the, the servers physically are not accessible by anyone. We have security cameras and we have cyber security for uh, for attempt to to get into the server because considering that yes we run renderings but with 40,000 GPUs if you get into that place you can do really super bad things I mean with 45,000 GPUs you can crack all the passwords of the world if you are a very very bad person so the security it's very it's our priority number one and it's kind of hard to get into it um, the first question I'm not sure about uh, I'm not sure about the. You mean that reload trusted? The, the old button reload trusted that run the Python script? Uh, that's, uh, that's a very, very tech question. I think um, if, if it works, it goes directly. If there is something that is not detected as default, it gives you an error. So sometimes happen in Cubic that there is, um, you know, a non downloaded from Blender org version of Blender, and there is something tweaked inside. Uh, Cubic tells you. Uh, it also tells to, tell to us, so we know exactly what happened and we fix it, or we reach out to you and we tell you what's going on. Uh, if you go on the the script layer, the script la level, it, it can probably happen that something goes wrong because you know it's there's a lot going on in the background. Uh, but I cannot tell you 100% because it depends on what kind of script you run. But usually it, sh it should be good. We run on, on, on Linux, uh, all command lines, so uh, it doesn't even look at the interface. So it technically should be all right, but thanks. Uh, one, one thing that I forgot to mention is that we have a, a real-time accurate cost calculation on the file manager. So um, the cost calculation of whatever thing you want to you wanna calculate is is exact. It's it's not um, something that. Oh, let me see what happened on on the file. Oh, probably on the jobs. Let me see. On the file. Okay. Uh, probably because it's the page is small. Let me see. Okay, right. So you get get estimate here. So if you click on this. So this estimate is gonna do mainly two things. Um, so imagine that you have the camera pointing at something, which is a cube, and that's a frame. But on frame 10, the camera turns around, and there is a Disney movie. 
and that's not an accurate estimate if I calculate that frame and that other frame it's left behind. So we take uh, random samples along the entire work that we have. In this case, it's 250 frames. And we calculate the, the average of that, giving you the, the single frame estimate, so that the only thing you need to do is to take that number, in this case, um, 35 cents, and multiply by the number of frames that you have. So this is simply estimate uh, cost per frame. It's very straightforward and simple. There is no cost for this. There is absolutely um, no, no charge. And it's accurate. It's not um, a random estimation or very close estimation of what it's going to be. It's, it's going to be mostly exact. Um, other things that you can do with concierge uh, from the job manager. Uh, let me see. The job manager. You could technically, yeah, you can download the zip with everything. You can go, my friends, you can go uh, to instead download the single, the single frame. You can have the preview. Uh, we talked about it. Ah, yes, one cool thing about Cubic that I forgot. There's many things. So you have this little eye over here. So this eye, it's uh, not only gives you information, it gives you also the preview of what you are rendering. If you are rendering an animation, this is going is giving you the, the animation preview as well. Let me just go to where I render some animations. Even if the, um, the render is not completed, uh, yeah, you can see, even if it's not completed, even the first 20 frames are done, you can already see what's going on in the animation so that you can check if all the movements, uh, movements are all right. And the more it delivers frames, the more this animation is going to be basically complete in your preview. Um, well, this is Core Weave. This is Cubic. Uh, we have Concierge for large and complex scene. The price is the same. And we really hope that uh, this can unlock uh, whatever block the render time created to you uh, during the rendering experience. And uh, for both pl platforms, we have uh, free credits to start. We offer five credits for both platforms to start, which is uh, nearly uh, like 10 hours of render on one GPU. And um, for the Beacon, during the registration process, if you enter Beacon 19, you're going to have three times the same. So you're, you're going to end up with $20, $20 of free credits here. So you log in, and during the, the registration, which is really easy, you enter Beacon 19, and you're going to have $20 of free credits only for the three days of the, of the Blender conference. Uh, thanks very much for being here. Thanks for the question. Thanks so much. I am Marco, and you can find me upstairs together with the other friends of Render Street. And uh, we hope you guys are going to enjoy the rest of the beacon. Thank you so much.